welcome back to the shop. Just a quick video here. I'm doing some tubing uh, coping on the Hats uh, fuselage, and if you're doing any kind of coping of roll cages, fuselages, whatever you got going on with tubing, uh, this is a really cool website. I just wanted to pass this along because it's made this job so much easier. So I'm going to walk you through the steps that I do to cope these uh, these cross members for the fuselage. Let's take a look. All right, what you want to do is you want to go to metalgeek.com, and I'll post a link down in the description. But uh, this tubing calculator is just awesome. Uh, it's work. It works on donations. I'm going to give this guy uh, 20 bucks for the amount of work that he saved me. And basically, when you pull it up, it's going to ask you uh, what diameter of tube that you're going to cut and what the wall thickness is, and then the mating diameter of the tube and what angle it comes into. Uh, there's an offset uh, uh, entry here in case the center lines of the tubes don't uh, mate, but for the most part, um, all your center line tubes should, uh, should intersect, so I don't really use that too often. But you go ahead and, uh, and fill the information in there, and then you just click on PDF, and it gives you a 2D uh, template that uh, comes off your printer, and uh, we'll go over and take a look at what we've got there. Once you grab the piece of paper off the printer, what you're going to get is this 2D template, and you just, that's full size, and uh, has the bird's mouth all uh, calculated out. You'll notice that there's uh, three stripes uh, going down the side of the paper, and that's another cool feature of this, is you're going to see how important that is uh, when it comes to uh, clocking both ends of the tube so that your angles come out to be uh, not the same, but they're in the right orientation for mating uh, cross members. So you cut that out, and then you, uh, what I do is I wrap it around a three quarter, I just happen to be working with three quarter inch tubing, wrap it around the tubing, tape the end. And then what I end up doing is I'll take this tube, uh, this is a piece that I, I ended up cutting short, you can kind of see the, the gap that I have in this piece here. Uh, for a novice welder like myself, um, I have a hard time bridging those kind of gaps, so I'd like to have it, you know, really pretty tight like you see here. Uh, but at any rate, uh, here's the piece that's going to go in there. And what you end up doing is uh, I clean it off with a little bit of MEK, and then I rest it on a table here, and then I drag a Sharpie across both ends, making sure that obviously it doesn't move because you want those to be in line. That's going to be the center line of your tube. And what that ends up doing is that once you slip the template on, you can find one of those one of those lines and clock the bird's mouth to that line so that when you go to the other side of the tube, you have a reference as to where these things are coming in. So that really works out nice. Uh, from there, what you end up doing, let me see if I can set this up. All right, so once you've got this uh, template, I'm going to start off. I've got two different copes coming in at the same angle, so I'm just going to line the top of that, uh, flush it up with the top of the tube, and then make sure that I've got my registry uh, on the line here. That looks pretty good. And then what I end up doing is I'll just go to the top, and you just take your Sharpie, you can see exactly where you have to cut and then I go in there and remove that uh, material with a uh, with a cutoff wheel a thin cutoff wheel and then go back and dress it with a uh, carbide burr although um, if you want to stick around I'm going to go ahead and show you how I make this whole thing uh, but if you're not interested and you're well versed in how to go ahead and remove that material um, try the metalgeekout.com uh, and uh, it's really a, just a huge huge time saver and these things come out to be perfect when they're done. If you take your time and just kind of massage it in, there's there's no reason why you should have a huge gap like I had uh, in the beginning. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video. I'm just going to go ahead and narrate over this because honestly nobody wants to hear a die grinder wail away. Uh, what I'm doing here uh, with this piece chucked up in the uh, in the vise um, is cutting slots about the width of the 
cutoff wheel itself, um, moving it over, rotating it, obviously, um, leaving these little fingers uh, in between uh, the kerf of the cutoff wheel. Once I go ahead and get these all uh, squared away, obviously, you can see I'm using a uh, TIG glove there to protect myself against the sparks. And I've got uh, not only safety glasses, but I've got a uh, I've got a grinding uh, hood over me uh, because these things are uh, really pretty dangerous. After I'm done cutting uh, the slots in, I can come in with the blade and just go ahead and cut the remaining pieces away. That way, I'm not spending a whole lot of time just going in and uh, slipping off the uh, the curve for the the cut and so on. I find that just stepping it over the di uh, the thickness of the cutoff wheel is good. And then uh, once those pieces are gone, um, I can, like you see here, I can come in and just kind of um, side wheel very gently uh, the sides and bring it right to the Sharpie mark. And uh, you'll find that that's going to work nice for you. Uh, once you get a little bit uh, proficient at it, you can kind of estimate the angle at which the tubes are going to meet so that you don't really thin out the wall of the tube right at the cope. Um, and then uh, that's really all there is uh, all there is to it. You can kind of see here side wheeling uh, a bit. It's uh, I haven't found it to be that dangerous. I don't really put a whole lot of uh, pressure on the side of it. It's a fiber cutoff wheel, so they're fairly strong. Um, but still, you want to be careful.